Okay, thank you. Ready to stand? Okay, thank you for coming. Um, Try to tell you what the new feature in the OpenP 4.0 and uh, my slide is uh, it's very technical what I mean. It's not a lot of figure or animation. But I will try to explain the concept and idea in the spec as much as I can. So my, my, my name is Yong Hong Ye. I'm from the uh, University of Houston. We do a lot of research in terms of the OpenMP, extending OpenMP, OpenMP compiler, runtime research. So, and uh, OK, what is OpenMP? I'm going to stick, skip this slide, but just make sure you know, we all have, like OpenMP has is, is API to write and share the memory programming, has, uh, I don't remember exact number, 27 something number from both uh, industry, national lab, and academia. OK. <laughs> and uh, from both industry and national lab at academia. Just to make sure. And OpenMP 4.0 is released on July 2013. And uh, the, the spec is on the website. And I list all this new feature from 3.1 to 4.0. And uh, all these section number here. So if you later on you get a list slide, you want a quick reference from the spec, you can just point to the section number. So basically, the ha the, the photo zero has accelerator support, CMD extension, and a place and a thread hierarchy uh, affinity task group, task group and a dependent task error handling, user defined reduction, and sequential consistency atomics and a fortune 2003. So it's a big big addition, and my view is. Uh, is probably the largest addition so far in terms of the OpenMP history in each of these reversions. And the, I'm going to go through each of them as much as I can, so feel free to stop me for any question. And the accelerator model, and the, it's based on, I'm going to summarize these three key things in the accelerator model. First, offloading. So the code and the data have to be offloaded to the accelerator. So this is the hard, how the hardware is designed. This is the basic concept. So the language interface we designed has is called OMP target. It is a target is a directive that tells the compiler that this code of a region need to be offloaded to a targeted device. It's it's uh, 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 the uh, called a device basically. It's a term that you use in, in the clause. It's a device, and a map is a clause that tell which date to be offloaded. So it's aimed to working with different kind of uh, accelerator into the GPU, GPU, mic, DSP, and FBGA. And this is probably one, you, something very interesting. You know, you can think of a remote node as something like an accelerator. You can offload something. But it is not something designed in the, in the user want or something designed we want. But you can explore this capability if you have compiler runtime support. And the right, if, if sometimes the accelerator has distributed memory compared with the host, and the remote node is the same thing. So that's one thing, offloading. And the next slide, slide number five, I'm going to give you a, a one example. And this is a very simple vector multiplication, vector matching multiplication, uh, especially. And this is original, the, the one I've put in the bracket, it is original OpenMP code. So if you have this original OpenMP code, a compiler support is running on CPU. Now to offload this piece of uh, parallel loop and the more uh, one additional program we add here is put a target now telling the compiler this piece of parallel code will be uh, offloaded to the, to the accelerator then tell the compiler how we want to map, map the data. So basically uh, a V1 and a V2 are two array and the compiler should be figured out, should be able to figure out the size of the array and then do the data movement of the whole array instead of just copy that pointer. So that's a two is mean from the host to the accelerator. And same thing from is the result come back from the accelerator to the host. So that's one. And uh, the second example is uh, we basically give more information to the, uh, to the uh, compiler. You know, sometimes if, com if you feel difficult for the compiler to figure out that array, for example, in this example, the compiler analysis for this uh, procedure can find out this is P wave one is inside of the array. But in this example, it's passing by pointer. So if a compiler only capable, or I mean, it's, it's most time, most compiler 
they only analyze, analyze the code or only transform the code based on a, a procedure. So inter-procedure analysis sometimes is very tough, especially if you have a, a, a library code. So now we have to give a compiler more information here. So this is pointer and how long that region going to be. I have to give more information that's from this address from, uh, for totally any number of elements. That can give more information to compiler to generate the code, uh, to generate the right-time code to do the offloading of data. Make sense? So those does, are does this imply now that the blue box code is offloaded like a kernel to the GPU? Yeah, the question is, uh, it is imply the parallel region code is offloaded to the, GP, uh, to the accelerator? The answer is yes. Okay. So this would be a kernel that's on the A for GPU. Yeah. Yes. Can, can you still give some more specification how it would run? Yes, I will have more detail. Okay. By the default, the spec tell you this piece of code is going to run, if, if you don't have this parallel, it's going to run on one thread. It's assuming the remote node has a multiple thread without, but this is standard OpenMP. So it may me tell the remote side, you have to launch the OpenMP parallel region and there's a parallel loop to do the loop chunking. Question? Uh, I was just clarifying that the top one stack based on the boss is valid. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes. again? Okay, the question is whether you can pass a C, a C plus or array object kind of thing. Well, that's probably tough for the compiler to do that. It's, you know, the, 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 the deep copy kind of thing. It's uh, the, the, the OpenMP spec tell you this is the way to do that and allow you to do a specific array region not necessarily from zero from any to a any but so far only one dimension so if you're working on the consist, uh, consi contiguous memory space that should be fine multiple dimensional array will be challenging I mean it's, it's not it's not it's not undurable but it's just challenging for the compiler right time to do that if a multiple uh, dimensional array non contiguous memory space is it possible to control data? That's it. The question would use data that would already be on the GPU. Would it be possible to do that? I would have, in the previous step, created data on my GPU and then refer to this data in this part of the, the slab. In this slab. Is it possible? Yeah, the question is whether you can reuse the data already mapped, right? Yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Yes, I have an example later on. Yeah, and let me go to later. Uh, we, some, some of these uh, examples will, will answer some of your questions. And this is one offloading. Uh, and the second is the explicit data mapping. I think we already see that. So the, the, the data mapping is, the, the example we just saw is data mapping is just combined with the code offloading. And, but sometimes that's the, the answer to your question probably. And sometimes we just want to tell, we want to offload this piece of data, but not a code here. This example is called a targeted data. The reason I put it in brackets is the targeted data is a combined directive. It, the data is not a clause of a target uh, directive. So targeted data is tell I only offload data. But if it's just targeted directive, it means offload both data and uh, uh, code. So in this example, for this is code block here, and I tell the compiler we want to offload loose uh, array A, B, and uh, no, no, not array A, B, and scalar variable A and B and array, A array, and this offloading will be only applied to these code blocks. So not after that. So only after that, only within this code block. But the code is still on the CPU at this point. Unless we tell the compiler that I want to offload this piece of code now. So if you have a code running here, this is CPU code. It's running on CPU. But if you here I tell the compiler that I want to lose code fusion, this code is going to be offloaded on the accelerator. And they will inherit this data mapping from uh, uh, the upper level of code blocks. Make sense? And you can always use the array region here, you know, a sub. But it's, you know, the best way it's working is, I mean, the easiest way for the compiler to support that is is this is a one dimensional array space in the contiguous memory region. 
And the target data example, that's the example, you know, basically in the, in the top level of that code block, we map data uh, array P. So the array P, the, this mapping will be available to this whole code region. And that's why we call the mapping inheritance. So in this code region, this, is, uh, this parallel loop will be offloaded to the accelerator. That's why you can still use P reference. It's going to be reference to the date on the accelerator, on the, on the host. So here, you know, in this example, we only made the V1 and V2 mapping for this uh, 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 target offloading, not here. But in this example, we do another mapping because we, we really share the V1 and V2 here. This is, uh, you know, valid code. Sometimes you have to do these two type of mapping because there's the initialization. Again, this is happening on the CPU side. Or is the second one. It's the third most important is the hierarchical parallelism. You know, if you look at the GP GPU, they have like, a, like in the Q dot term, like they have a, a, a grid of blocks in the one level of thread hierarchy. Underneath that is called a, a thread, a, a block of a thread. It's another second level hierarchy. So, and in each level of a thread hierarchy, you can create one dimension, two dimension, or three dimensional topology of this entity, either thread or block. And what the OpenP 4.0 introduced, it's called a league. A league is, um, is a multiple team, and each team contains uh, a, no a number of threads. So OpenP, open before OpenP 4.0, there's a team concept. A team is a, is a group of threads. Now, basically, we add one more level of organizing that team. Basically, now we have, can have multiple teams, and each team has multiple threads. OK, this is uh, the language interface. Over here, there's the code we want offloading. And underneath that, we, we create a number of teams, and each team have a number of threads. Like we have two teams, each team has eight threads. And now here, when we do distribute, it's basically distribute this parallel loop among the teams. I'm going to show you a, a later example. I'm going to show the, how to dis, uh, further distribution of, of loop among the, the thread within the team. And one note here, so if you ha we, we're using OpenP barrier here, the barrier only apply within a team, not across multiple teams. So that's, you know, something similar to the uh, Q.sync thread kind of a synchronization. The barrier only apply within a block. In this OpenP, the barrier only apply within a team, not across team. So far, this is what, we, what, what the standard provides. And uh, some example here. It's a dot product with team. So here we have a parallel loop. Uh, we tell the compiler this code need to be offloaded. The whole, uh, basically the whole, the whole thing here. I'm, I, I, should, I should put a line number. And the data mapping is the B and the C. And then in the next directive, we create a team and a, and, uh, and a thread. The thread limit is this is something you know compiler or hardware limitation that you want to tell the maximum number of a thread or each team, but you can definitely tell uh, uh, explicit how many thread you want to create, and there's a reduction we want to apply too because we want to consolidate all the data, and in this level of data distribution, not the, the the this is the two level of loops. If you look at this code here, this level loop we create. Uh, no, the number of iteration is equal to the number of teams. So basically, each team will be pick one of uh, the iteration. The number of teams, number of blocks, and this loop, the the iteration space is number of blocks. So basically, we we a multiple team, the disk will split this parallel loop among multiple teams. It's like the OpenP parallel four, but this chunk size that's the one. And then underneath that is just a standard OpenP code because OpenP working with teams of a thread. And in this example, and for each team, there will be uh, they were working on this parallel loop will perform the standard OpenP loop chunking. And there will be another reduction happening here. Where each team need to perform reduction. And on top of level, uh, I mean, or the thread of team is for each reduction. Then on top of level, or the league need to perform reduction to come with some value back to the uh, a result. Next thing. 
Uh, yes, that's uh, that's mostly the, the 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 major you know introduction of this uh, Open P four out zero accelerator support. There are other features, but not uh, not at not uh, uh, at the key point here. And the one thing is the declare target. Is that sometimes if we if people already de de develop some library like CUDA, QBlast, or CUDA FFT, and you just want to call it instead of writing your code or writing your compiler code, you can declare a target. Let's say, oh, this is this is function is is a function running on the accelerator, and then in that piece of code, you can just call that a function. And a target update, target update is something. Uh, here, if you want, if you want to just want to update date uh, on the host from the date on the from the copy on the accelerator, you can just call update in the middle of this region, so the date can be copied back or or forth uh, from and to the accelerator. And this to the CMD, this is another I will going to show, tell you later in the in terms of S, uh, CMD support. It's secrets offloading using task. Uh, this is something like combined uh, with OpenP task to support accelerator accel uh, asynchronous uh, offloading of uh, of uh, uh, a code region, so you don't blocking the CPU to waiting for the uh, GPU to complete. And a array region we just mentioned, and if clause is another one that you can tell this uh, uh, compiler that if certain condition made, please offload. Otherwise, please ignore running on the host. A runtime routine, runtime we basically check how many uh, how many devices on that uh, system you know thing, or set the default device to offload code. Yeah, that's pretty much of this uh, accelerator support part. Uh, if you have a question. So I'm aware that Intel has opened a new port out also. What's the status of OpenMP4 support for compilers that support GPUs as targets? Uh, yeah, this is the release. The, the spec just released uh, July. Uh, there's only one compiler doing this kind of. Uh, we, we add a support of this uh, 4.0. It's the Rose compiler. It's the work between us and uh, Livermore. We do some initial uh, support of 4.0 accelerator, only accelerator part. For uh, with open, for OpenP 4.0 with the Rose compiler, you basically we have paper in the IWAMP published. That's the only thing I know so far. But there there's a lot of uh, OpenACC compiler, so we have our OpenC compiler in, in OpenUH uh, uh, you know support too. You know, one of my understanding is it's converting OpenACC compiler to support OpenP 4.0 is not that difficult. It's mainly the changing of the parser and the language interface. The underlying transformation could be leveraged. I'm sorry to forgot to repeat the question. The question. <laughs> okay. Can I have a bottle of water? <laughs> Thank you. I got it. Uh, Okay, the next big addition is uh, CMD loops, and uh, it's basically support the vectorization uh, of, a, of a parallel loop for architecture that has a vector. So there are two interfaces introduced, is OMP CMD and OMP4 CMD. And uh, this is like applied to a loop that tells the compiler do this vectorization for this parallel loop. And this also can be combined with OpenP team and all OpenP target. This is like this will be something working with Intel Xeon Phi. In the Xeon Phi, it's a it's an accelerator. It's off. It's an accelerator, and it has very good uh, vector uh, vector unit. So and that's basically this will working because uh, uh, this will work. The distribution here that we mentioned. This is the combined distribute with parallel four, and this will chunk this parallel loop among multiple teams and each team get a chunk of this parallel reach, this parallel fall and within each chunk the same will be applied this is something is pretty 
I'm, I'm pretty challenging for programmer now. You have multiple, at least two levels of parallelization or parallelization. First, chunking that loop among multiple teams. Second, each chunking of a loop iteration, you have to apply vectorization. The compiler will apply vectorization. Yeah, the question. Yeah, the question if the user, you know, didn't use it in the right way, right? Yeah. yeah what the what's the problem? What what's what's the compiler or how the compiler uh, will do? My my author probably compiler may be confused and just ignore that. And <laughs> or compiler tell you if compiler smart enough or oh, this is the wrong wrong way of using that, tell you this is the wrong way of using it. You know, it's it's compiler. It's a uh, you just do whatever you can in a very you know, conservative way. That's. Does that simply uh, does that apply to architectures that don't necessarily have to simply? Does that apply to GPUs, for instance? Yeah. The question is uh, whether the CMD is only applied to C architecture that has vector capability or can be applied to other. Actor has like GPU, GPU, right? And this is also an uh, uh, implementation issue. So the, the implementation may take CMD and convert to a GPU kind of a model. It's, it's all dependent if, and some compiler, if they don't have uh, accelerator support, the, the compiler may be just paralyzed on the CPU as much as they can or using. What is AMD? Say about this in their APU? Good question. The question is what AMD is saying about this approach. Uh, I really don't. Yeah, especially for APU, yeah. I really don't have uh, this on their AMD. It's part of the OpenB standard. But this, this, uh, this proposal was mainly pro really, uh, you know, championed by the Intel. Uh, the like the, 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 the APU just to take the, para, the, the, the unrolled or parallel for them and do it for them. You specify, do this on the GPU segment. No data transport, memory is all the same. Yeah, the, you're, your, your comment is whether GPU could be just doing that on the APU without right. doing copy data or other things. On the yeah, the my 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 thought is like this is the spec. You know how the compiler implementer interpret the spec is completely different. So it can work. Yeah, it can work. It's like a map. It's just a map, not necessarily to be data movement. Right. No data it's movement. yeah. It's it could be yeah. It's 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 very possible. It's uh, yeah. it's depend on the hardware and uh, that's why sometimes I come out with is is this kind of standard. For different kind of hardware, it's very challenging. So this interpretation of the compiler and the different window implemented, it's all lived to how they interpret that. And I only have one slide of the CMD. Uh, the third one is uh, I wanted to uh, introduce it the uh, the OpenMP thread affinity. But before I talk about that, I want you know, I'm sure you know, but if in case. We are not familiar, you know, the first task policy in the NUMA machine. I should, I should just skip this one. Okay, let me just how quickly. And uh, the NUMA is like the array element will be allocated on that on that memory region, who uh, that uh, close to the processor who going to access first. That's my my way of uh, explaining that. So in this part of four. And if this loop is running on this processor, and this will alloc no, not allocate that array in physical memory that close to this processor. And that's the NUMA region. That's the way of, of, of uh, NUMA working. So in this code, if you put a parallel 4 running on these two threads, and the same thing here, now because this uh, parallel 4 will be split into two threads, and each one will accept half of that array, and half of that will be put on the memory 
close to this processor and the other half will be close to this processor. That's the Numa effect. So if later on, because when the, when the memory allocation was done, it's done, it's not going to be the shift around now. We, if you later on, we have another parallel region and now the loop with the switch and the processor, uh, this way we need to access data from zero to, uh, to 49, it will have this remote memory access across this one. It's called a memory, at least it's called a, a, a new my effect. So the way is, the, the, the way they call the first pass, because whoever passed that memory region, will, the, the, that memory uh, uh, will be allocated on that uh, bank close to that processor. So the OMP currently, before the 3. Uh, before the 4.0, they don't have explicit support or help the programmer to do handle this kind of situation. The programmer has to know, if you write, you optimize your code, you have to know there's a new my effect, there's a first touch policy, you have to write a code on do this way. And the 4.0 trying to address this issue by the called OMP places and OMP binding thread. So I'm trying to, this is my understanding of the spec. I'm not the, 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 the right way, but I think I'm understanding rightly. And OMP places, they tell the runtime or tell the execution team that there is multiple hardware thread. When I mean put a hardware thread, you can just think of a hardware core. It's, it's not, at least, at least not an open piece thread, because open piece thread in the, in the, is a piece thread mapped to the hardware core. And this is, tell the compiler, tell the runtime, this is how the architecture is going to be if you're writing this piece of code on this machine. So this is, this is like, you can think of a memory hierarchy of that machine. So like, if we have, a, a, how do you say, four socket, for example. Each socket has two core processor in this way. Now we can put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, and each of these uh, socket as one place, and now each place has two core. Tell the right time, or this is the information I'll give to you. Make use of that. Now it's all come to the implementation, how to make use of that. But this is the way that OMB provides this way for the programmer. You can tell the right time, this is the, this is the, this is the architecture going to run. And now the programmer how to, how, how to do this is uh, how you bind a parallel region to uh, the architecture. So the proc bind is another clause of a parallel directive to specify how we want assign OpenB thread to the places. Basically, we tell the compiler right now, oh, where is the right hub issue now? Please bind this OpenB thread to that hardware thread, to that hardware code. So I'm not going to go into all this detail there are multiple ways of abiding. It's called different policy, but that's the main idea of, uh, of the OpenB support this affinity. So tell the, how the architecture, tell how the binding, and let the right time handle that. Hopefully, it can do good work. We don't know, you know, it's, it's our implementation issue. The different binding policy, uh, they call it uh, like uh, master, close, and spread. I'm not going to go to that, that, that detail. It, it's a, uh, it's all impact when you do the binding and what the, what the view of each thread has locally on this when they, when they run their code. You know, if they're nested parallel for, then how the, next, uh, the additional step binding going to be. This is how they handle, you know. But it definitely you can look at spec later or some, some example document already published and all the slide. Next thing. Okay, this, the, the next one is OpenB task extension. This is not a huge, or not, it's, a, it's a pretty big addition uh, in terms of, the, in terms of the, the, the application support. In terms of the language, it's not a lot, but they will, have a, they will support a lot of a new application. The first one is specify task dependency. Now before that, we have a task wait to block or at, least, at this point or this task stop here uh, uh, before we continue. And this uh, follows there we, Introducing the in out is that we can introduce in the dependency between individual tasks by specify in out, which means if if I if one thread have out and another thread have in, they can link them together as a dependency. So not they are not con constrained by the task weight. That's that's very important feature. We we have done some implementation. I'm going to show you some draw. Another way the OpenP task group. This is different with the task weight. Task weight is, weight is, is called a shallow synchronization 
only synchronize the sibling thread, not sibling task, but not the recursively created task. The task group will join all these tasks created within that code block. It's like uh, if you if you if you look at a silk, the silk uh, no silk is like task way. If the extend language extend has a finish, this kind of thing is like extend finish. It synchronize all these tasks created within that code block. So I'm going to show you some results we did using in our this is the LU example. If you look at you know you, the LU example is like you have you, you compute the corner case, the compute the row and the column, and then and the third step you can compute the rest of that and propagate this way. There are there, there are three steps of LU decomposition. It is first step, second step, and in each step, in each within each step, all these blocks can be computed in parallel. And before that. The way we, we, we do parallelization is create a task for this blue box, has a task waiter there, then create a multiple task on this green box, has a task waiter there, and then create a, a multiple task on this yellow box, has a task waiter there. So the, the problem here, if you see from the green box to the yellow box, and the synchronization have, has to happen among multiple tasks. There's a global, we call it global barrier, stop here. But it's actually, if these two green box comp uh, finish computation, we can start in launching this yellow box that depends only on these two green box. So that's why we are able to use the, the OpenB 4.0 in out to do that. And uh, we get a pretty good speed up. This is uh, compared with the standard OpenB uh, implementation using task away. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's running on the 48 thread. Uh, Compare with the Intel compiler, GCC, some compiler, PGI. This is compared with other data-driven computation like a Quirk and a but it's not a supercomputing uh, data dependency implementation. And the next one, the error handling. Okay, this is uh, this something you know before that OpenP. If there's something wrong within thread, the this the, the the code will crash. Most most of the code will crash because the right if it don't run, run have don't support that. The way error model support that now, if a thread sees some error, the thread can initiate a cancel call, tell other thread, oh, this is something wrong there. We should stop processing the rest of the, the parallel region. And uh, that's the, the main purpose of doing that. The way of doing that, if we one thread, for example, thread A has a cancel signal. But, and now all that thread, when they check that signal, they, when they see that signal, they will just ignore the rest of computation and go to the rest of the parallel, uh, go to the end of the parallel region. And the scene is here, we don't know we, when these threads are going to check whether the, the, the cancellation was the, was the initial or not. So we, there's the, there the several uh, cancellation points identified, like OpenP barrier is the cancellation point. And any barrier call, and each thread will check whether it's a cancellation initial or not. If there are, then they go, just go jump to the end of this parallel region. That's how the error handling model works. One question. Is there any uh, API and any that uh, we can use to tell if the uh, cancel directive is the thread is the cancel directive? How do you detect that or do you have to have or do you have to use the cell? Yeah, very good question. The I don't I don't remember we still discussing in the uh, in the new standard, they will introduce a new runtime API whether cancellation was the initial or not. There is. Yeah, whether it's, if my, the question is whether there's a runtime API that can, the user can use to query whether there's a cancellation initial or not. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I need to look at the detail, but I do remember there's something planned to be there for that in, in, in this version or Fallout 1. And the definer, uh, user definer reduction is, uh, is for the user to create reduction the more than the standard, like plus, minus, sum. So user can create reduction function at the same and put it in, in a parallel loop to do the further reduction. And atom extension is basically introduce a compare swap kind of a, 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 or a flush kind of interface to programmer to do that. You know, this is uh, uh, something introduced, but I, I, I don't see this is uh, people think it's a big deal, but 
looks to me uh, it's pretty, it should be there earlier. And uh, the next one, okay, notes on compiler implementation. This is my last slide. I think Intel has this offloading model for Mike and uh, CMD support. If you I read some of their documents, it's pretty, they, they already make things working pretty, pretty stable. And what we did in the Rose compiler, we have a paper published in IWOM. That's for the GP GPU. We implemented that GP GPU. And it's basically source to source compiler transformation. We transformed this uh, OpenP accelerator model to a CHUDA code. We didn't go to the binary region. And OpenUH is our compiler at the UH. We have a task dependency support. The ER, the results are just showing. And uh, the next uh, OpenCC compiler, like if, if they're OpenCC compiler, my, my feeling is, you know, based on my experience of doing that in, the, in our compiler, it should be not that complicated to, do, to support OpenP. So. And maybe Oracle at the grid, they are doing something. But maybe Oracle is doing uh, the affinity support, you know, that's so far, as far as I can guess. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.